Hi, I'm Lynn Morgan, pastor of St. Matthew's United Church of Christ. Last month, my wife Sandy retired. Now, when people retire, they often will have a big party, but she's no more inclined to have parties than I am. And some people would maybe go on a cruise, but she didn't want to go on a cruise. What she wanted and what she got was a new kitty. Actually, a new old kitty, eight-year-old boy, very big boy, uh, a big puddle of a cat, 21 pounds, and lots of fur on top of that. And uh, his name's Oliver. And promptly upon making himself at home, Oliver started doing what cats do, which is to get into mischief. And one of the first pieces of mischief old Oliver did was to destroy one of my hearing aids. And so, as it turns out, the cruise probably would have been the economical option for us for retirement gifts. This is not just a retirement story or a kitty story. I could go on. But it is a story about wake-up calls. Because one of the things that our little cat does, our big old cat, is that he has an affinity for me, but only in the late morning hours, that is to say, late to him, very early to me, somewhere around four or five o'clock, and little kitty decides that he'd like to visit me. And he's quite aggressive in his visiting. He pushes right up into my face, and usually with, well, a runny cold nose. And so Kitty uh, has, has woken me up in various different ways. The most striking being, A, pressing a cold nose against a closed eye. An eye closed, I should say, in sleep. The second one, which happened just last night, which occasioned my decision to share this story with you, is that he camped out up on my shoulder. And this cat, when he's really happy, he drools a bit, uh, or his nose runs. I don't want to think about what it is. But, but a cold drop of something that emanated from the cat landed right dead in my ear. And I'll tell you what, that will wake you up in a heartbeat if you are sentient. And it woke me up, and it made me think, that I'd like to share with you. Wake-up calls, how they come to us. And sometimes they are as unwelcome as a cat's nose pressed against your closed eye in sleep, or a drop of something from the cat's nose or mouth landing in your ear. Ick. Sometimes they're much more painful than that. For some people, this anxiety, the tension, the fear, the presence of suffering and death is for us a wake-up call about our mortality, about the perilousness of our lives, despite how, you know, comfortable we are, how, how ensconced we are in, in modern convenience and, and safety and good health in general and great medical care, that none of those things take away our creaturely vulnerabilities. We're mortal. We're subject to sickness and death and suffering. And so that's a wake-up call for us to live our lives in the consciousness of their shortness, but also in the wonderful consciousness of their blessedness, that they last only so long and we ought not to fritter them away, thinking that someday we'll become the kind of people we want to be. Someday we'll nurture those relationships that mean so much to us, because someday isn't guaranteed to us. Today is guaranteed to us. Sometimes wake-up calls are just the delight, the wonder, the experience of how good life can be and the desire to make the most of it. Not every wake-up call is a negative. Often they are things that drive us not to our knees in despair, but to open our arms in thanksgiving. Be awake today to the gift that is this day. Live it fully. Live it in love and live it in peace. Amen.